let's have another look at the next use case. And this is one is again from Mark. So Mark detected a number of deviations and risks in the previous uh, use case. So since he found out these, he's wondering what more is going uh, potentially wrong within the process. So he wants to investigate the 4i principle for paying invoices. So again, we're going to switch back to the application. We're going to the conformance part. We're going to reset all our filters. So you have a look at the complete set. And now we're going to switch to our tab called the 4i principle. And here we can select um, two activities that should not be executed by the same person. So in this case, Mark's interested in the approval and the paying of the invoices. And when we do that, we see that uh, this happens uh, a number of times. So let's switch to the case owners on this side. And let's have a look. So one of the things that's interesting also with Prof Mining and in this case, application one, is that we can also have a view at the history. So below here, we can see some changes uh, over time. And this is an interesting one. It's quite a big increase for Gary Lee. So let's focus on that one. So we can select Gary from the list. So now we're only looking at the cases that belong to Gary. And with this button at the top, we can go to the detail list. And when we do that, we get an overview of all the invoices that belong to Gary that uh, adhere to these things that we're filtering on. So they're all uh, cases where either somebody did an approval and a payment done by the same person, in this case, the system. We can sort on case amount and find out which ones are the really big ones. And then by clicking one, we can actually zoom in all the way to the individual case, and have a look at it. And here we see that indeed the approval and the payment was done by the same thing, uh, a system. So by using process mining and the 4i principle, Gary has, uh, Mark has found a number of cases that are interesting and that he can further investigate. There's another way that Mark could have done this, and that's by using tags. So tags are a way of checking business rules that we predefined in the configuration stage that I mentioned earlier. There are a number of different tags within, and we can even make more, but these are just some standard uh, examples that we use. And within the violation, we have a number of different things. And here, for instance, we have a tag that says payment is done by a non-authorized user. So this is also something that's interesting for Mark. So let's focus on that. We can filter on this. So now we're only looking at cases where the payment has been done by a user that was not authorized. So let's see what this looks like uh, as a process. So here we see the process in these cases and we see that uh, there's one person, one case owner where this happens quite a lot and that's in the cases of uh, Kayleigh Jackson. So let's filter on that. And now we see that uh, for these cases, the payment usually is uh, preceded by the approval of the invoice. So what we can do now is we can have a look at the users and the interactions and see who's sending that invoice to be paid to someone who's not authorized to do that. So let's switch to the user step and to the interaction step. And we're now interested in the two activity being the pay activity. So we want to know who's sending stuff to pay. And then we don't want to sort this on a country level, but we want to see this on a user level. And, and now we can see that the person who's mostly responsible for sending these invoices to the wrong person for payment is Norman. So 
by using the tags, uh, Mark can easily filter on a specific case that he wants to investigate. And then by using a combination of the process and the user, Mark is able to identify who's responsible in a large part for this uh, bad routing of, of invoices. Okay, so this is uh, one of the ways that Mark could use process mining to solve his challenges. So let's have a look at another use case. <clears throat> 